What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my hematology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about anemias, leukemias, lymphomas, and multiple myeloma. After multiple myeloma, we talked about MGUS, or monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Today, we have a similar but not identical topic known as MGRS, monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance. Unlike MGUS, today's topic can actually damage the kidney. And this damage can be brutal, causing progressive kidney disease, and it might end up as end-stage renal failure. And that's why it's important to recognize it early and not to conflate it or confuse it with MGUS because they are not the same. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This video is part of my hematology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. This video was made possible thanks to a generous support from Michael, who reached out to me and asked, Hey, Medicosis, would you please create a video on MGRS? So please take a moment to say thank you to Michael in the comments because he's the reason this video exists. Back to basics, here is the bone marrow. What is the source of all of my blood cells, whether we're talking red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets? The source is the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the factory that makes the cells that live in our blood. So we start in the bone marrow from stem cells, known as pluripotent stem cells. They are potent to produce a plurality of cells. They give you myeloid cells and lymphoid cells. The myeloid cells will give you every blood cell that you can imagine, with the exception of lymphocytes, because lymphocytes have their own origin, lymphoid cells. So the erythroblasts become erythrocytes. These are the mature red blood cells. The myeloblasts will become myelocytes, and these are the cells that have the acronym BEN. Basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. Basophils are called basophils because they have basophilic blue granules. Eosinophils are called eosinophils because they have eosinophilic or pink granules. Neutrophils are called neutrophils because they have neutral granules that are neither pink nor blue. The monoblasts will become monocytes. The megakaryoblasts will become megakaryocytes, which will literally explode into smithereens. Each piece is a platelet. Lymphoblasts will become lymphocytes. So where are the red blood cells? Here. Where are the platelets? Here. How about the white blood cells? All of these and these are the white blood cells. Tell me about my lymphocytes. You have two types. You have B lymphocytes, also known as B cells, and T lymphocytes, known as T cells. The B lymphocyte, just like any medical student, starts as naive. But then eventually they will recognize the antigen. They will understand that there is so much evil and suffering in the world, and they will mature and become mature B cells and plasma cells. The plasma cells can secrete antibodies in the plasma of your blood. So, when I have a disease of plasma cell, whether it's cancer or not, what do we call that? Plasma cell dyscrasia. Dys from dysfunction. And these plasma cells belong to what? Do they come from the B lymphocyte lineage or the T lymphocyte lineage? They come from the B lymphocyte lineage. The way I remember it is that you draw a B like this and then you invert it upside down to look like a P. So that's the plasma cell. How do I know that today's topic is a plasma cell disorder? Because I see abnormal antibodies in the blood. Because I see abnormal antibodies in the urine. And the antibodies came from plasma cells. Plasma cells are cells that secrete antibodies into the plasma of your blood because your blood is made of two things. Plasma, that's the liquid portion, and cells or the cellular portion. The cells of the blood include red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets as we saw. The white blood cells include basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes. The lymphocytes could be B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. Next, the plasma is made of water with electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, etc. And plasma proteins, made by whom? By the liver. The liver makes them and then secretes them to the plasma of your blood. And these plasma proteins include two big categories, albumin and globulins. Globulin is not one, it is many. And we have different types of globulins. There is alpha-1, alpha-2, there is beta, and there is gamma globulin. 
The gamma globulins, also known as aminoglobulins, are the antibodies. Why do we call them aminoglobulins? Because they are part of the immune system. Normally, the immune system should be fighting foreign invaders that are trying to invade my body. But in today's disease, these antibodies are attacking my own body. Let's review hematological disorders. If red blood cells are low, we call that anemia. If they are excessively high, we call this polycythemia. If white blood cells are low, we call that leukopenia. If they are high, leukocytosis. If platelets are low, thrombocytopenia. If platelets are too many, thrombocytosis or thrombocythemia. If lymphocytes are low, lymphopenia. If lymphocytes are high, lymphocytosis. If lymphocytes have cancer, well, where did it start? If it starts in the bone marrow, we call that leukemia. If it started in a lymph node, we call that lymphoma. Leukemia is like a lemonade juice, but lymphoma is like a lemon, a solid lemon. And that distinction was elaborated in my previous video titled Leukemia versus Lymphoma. Lymphocytes include B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes will become plasma cells. Plasma cells secrete antibodies. Multiple myeloma, MGUS. And today's topic, which is MGRS, are plasma cell dyscrasias. Plasma cells secrete what? They secrete antibodies into the plasma of your blood. How does the antibody look like? It looks like this. The light blue is the light chain. The dark blue is the heavy chain. So we have two light chains and we have two heavy chains. And this antibody is going to bind what? It's going to bind the antigen. It's called antigen antibody complex. Two proteins hugging one another. The antigen is going to bind here and all of this antibody. So this portion is the antigen binding site. But this portion down here is what's going to bind the antibody to a cell. This could be the cell of the invader. A bacterial cell to destroy it. Or it could be your cell. Well, that's bad. Because now the antigen antibody reaction is being toxic to my own cell. And this is what happens to my kidney cells in cases of monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance, MGRS. Hematological malignancies, these are true cancers, can be divided into leukemias, lymphomas, and multiple myeloma. Cancer, in general, is monoclonal. What does that mean? From one clone, from one colony, from one origin, from one type of stupid cell that started the entire disaster. And then that one stupid cell divided and divided and divided some more and kept dividing like there is no tomorrow. Multiple myeloma is a true cancer. It fulfills the criteria for cancer. However, MGUS and MGRS, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance have not yet fulfilled the criteria of cancer. So that means that MGRS is nothing to worry about. No, uh, 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 no. Nope. The reason why a brand new renal category was created is to tell you, pay attention, this is not insignificant anymore. This can damage the patient's kidney. It has renal significance, not undetermined significance. And while the approach for MGUS might be watchful waiting, which means watch and wait, which means, my dear patient, go home, there is nothing to worry about, but follow up to see if it gets worse or not. That's not the case in MGRS, because this can destroy a kidney. Even a healthy kidney can deteriorate very fast, which means MGRS requires treatment right now. And what's the main reason for treatment? To protect the kidney. Let's review multiple myeloma, then we'll review MGUS, and then we'll talk about MGRS. First, multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma and MGUS and MGRS are all plasma cell dyscrasias. They are plasma cell disorders. They are monoclonal. They started from one crazy cell and we have one crazy type of one crazy antibody. And antibodies are what? Are they alpha globulins, beta globulins, or gamma globulins? They are gamma globulins. So we say gammopathy, pathology of the gammas. Are these normal proteins? No, in this disease, they are not normal. So we call them para to the normal, parallel, paraproteinemias. Or dysfunctional, so dysproteinemias. Here's the antibody, it has heavy chains and light chains. In some of these diseases, we have too many abnormal heavy chains. So that will be a heavy chain disease. Others will have 
too many abnormal light chains. So we say light chain disease. Other diseases will have both types together. But make no mistake about it, the problem is in one crazy type that happens to be proliferating too much. So number-wise it's very high, but function-wise it is dismal. Robust number, but poor function, because it's a pathology. Let's talk about the types of the antibodies that we have in the human body. We have five types of heavy chain. There is IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, and IgD. And we have two types of light chain. We have the kappa light chains and the lambda light chains. So I could have multiple myeloma that has one crazy antibodies, which is IgM kappa or IgG lambda or IgG kappa, etc. So you pick one from here and one from there because each one antibody is made of two heavy chains and two light chains. Which type of heavy chain? It could be any one of these. Which type of light chain could be any one of these? In multiple myeloma, we have too many monoclonal antibodies in the patient's blood. So we'll have too many in the patient's urine. When they are too many, that's abnormal. And we call this Benz-Jones proteins in the urine or Benz-Jones proteinuria. Proteinuria means proteins in the urine. But how do you know that this is the case? Enters electrophoresis. Electro means electricity, phoresis means separation. We're gonna separate them by means of electricity, by means of positive versus negative charges. And that's what the word electrophoresis mean. If you want to learn more about electrophoresis, I have a separate video titled electrophoresis, and you can find it in my biochemistry playlist. Here's how electrophoresis work. The proteins in your body are negatively charged. So when they put them in this device uh, next to the negative electrode, the negative will repel with the negative because like charges repel and they will migrate towards the positive electrode. How fast they migrate depends on many factors, but you can use this velocity in order to draw a graph. And the graph will represent the albumin followed by alpha-1 globulin, alpha-2 globulin, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. Remember that antibodies, aminoglobulins, are gamma globulins. This is what the normal peak of gamma globulins look like. But because multiple myeloma is a freaking cancer, we have tons of gamma globulins in the blood giving me this peak. And this peak is made of one type of one crazy cell, monoclonal peak hence the M spike. Please be careful, just because it is called the M spike doesn't necessarily mean that it's IgM. It could be anything. It could be IgM, IgG, IgA, etc. M stands for monoclonal. Whether you say M component, M protein, or M spike, this means M monoclonal, and not to be confused with IgM. What the electrophoresis tells you is that you have tons of antibodies in your body. But it does not tell you whether the heavy chain of that antibody is IgM, A, G, E, or D. It does not tell you whether the light chains are lambda or kappa. Then how can we tell? You will need another test called immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation. Would you describe multiple myeloma, MGOS and MGRS as B cell disorders or T cell disorders? They are B cell disorders. Cancers are what? Monoclonal. So we say the M component. The M component could be made of anything. The most common heavy chain to be found in multiple myeloma is actually IgG. As for the light chain, it could be kappa or lambda. The light chains are called Benz Jones proteins. This was the classification of monoclonal gammopathies next to MGUS because some doctors realized that many patients with MGUS whose kidney was vulnerable were neglected because physicians thought, oh, it's undetermined significance, so just go home. But no, because some of these patients, those who have MGRS, renal significance, has a risk of kidney failure. So this one requires treatment. This one, maybe we can wait, but not MGRS. MGRS requires treatment right now to protect the kidney. So monoclonal gammopathies are not just multiple myeloma. These include multiple myeloma, they include MGUS, they include MGRS, and many other diseases. And these are the titles of many videos that I have regarding these topics. What's the problem of having too many antibodies? Isn't that a good thing? No, because here you have only one crazy type. And one crazy type 
is not enough to fight infections. Moreover, this one crazy type is abnormal. Moreover, this one crazy type is gonna crowd out the other normal antibodies, leading to immunodeficiency. So actually, if I do have multiple myeloma, I become more vulnerable to infections because even though my antibodies are too many, number one, they suck at their job. And number two, they do not have enough variety to fight the infection. Can we summarize the symptoms or the findings of multiple myeloma in one mnemonic? Yeah, it's called CRAB65. What's the C? High calcium in the blood. Why is the calcium high in the blood? Because my bones are breaking down, releasing the calcium from the bone to the blood. The R is renal failure, kidney disease. A is anemia and the B is bone problems, which cause the calcium to be high in the blood. So I said CRAB 65. Why did I say 65? Because the average patient is old. The median age is 70. So you can even say CRAB 70. That's a better mnemonic than CRAB 65. So here are some symptoms that can take place in multiple myeloma. Bone pain, bone fractures, nephrotic syndrome, which means that my kidney is losing proteins in the urine, such as albumin or globulin, kidney failure, heart disease, easy bruising on the skin, nerve problems, and more. The eye can get bruising or retinal bleeding. The brain can get headache, blurry vision, vertigo, lethargy, confusion, ischemia, and more. After the clinical signs and symptoms, let's go to the lab. We have blood tests, we have urine tests, we have radiological tests, and we have biopsies. Blood test, ESR, CRP, CBC, CMP, serum protein electrophoresis versus urine protein electrophoresis. This tells you that we have a problem. We have tons of antibodies, but it does not tell you what type of antibody is it. To know that, you need immunoelectrophoresis or immunofixation. You can also measure the level of these immunoglobulins in the blood and in the urine. You can do kidney function tests because multiple myeloma can damage the kidney. And when the kidney is damaged, the kidney will be unable to excrete the waste. So all of that waste will pile up in the blood. Lots of urea in the blood, lots of creatinine in the blood, abnormal electrolytes in the blood, and more. Then what's the source of multiple myeloma? Abnormal plasma cells. Where did they come from? From B lymphocytes. Where did they come from? From the bone marrow. So let's biopsy the source. Bone marrow biopsy. And then you stain the sample, look at it under the microscope, that's called histology or histopathology, or look for abnormal antigen antibody reactions. You can identify different types of antigens based on their reactions with known antibodies. Multiple myeloma can be managed via many options, including chemotherapy, including autologous stem cell hematopoietic cell transplant. There is palliative care to manage symptoms. And if there is an OMA tumor, you can hit it with a radiation. Remember CRAB 70. Calcium is high, renal problems, anemia, bone problems. The median age is 70, 70 years. And here is a quick mnemonic to help you remember the symptoms of multiple myeloma. Please pause and review. We're done with multiple myeloma. Let's review MGUS quickly. Monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Is MGUS cancer? Not yet. Not quite. It has not fulfilled the criteria to be called cancer. So if you want to call it precancerous or pre-malignant, that's fine. The monoclonal protein level in the blood is less than 3 grams per deciliter, but in multiple myeloma, it was greater than 3. Moreover, if you biopsy the bone marrow in MGUS, you'll find that less than 10% of the bone marrow is made of malignant plasma cells. But in multiple myeloma, more than 10%. Multiple myeloma had amyloidosis. MGUS usually does not. Multiple myeloma usually had CRAB, hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, and bone problems. MGUS usually does not. Multiple myeloma had end organ damage. MGUS does not. How do we treat MGUS? Watch and wait. Follow up with the patient to see if it becometh cancer, if it becomes multiple myeloma later. Using this approach, however, missed the mark in many cases because many patients had MGRS instead of MGUS. MGUS is not bad for my kidney on average, but MGRS is disastrous for my kidney. MGUS and the rule of nose. 
MGUS is not a cancer, we have no idea why it happens, it leaves no end organ damage, no hypercalcemia, no renal failure, no anemia, no bone lesions, no amyloidosis, no more than 10% plasma cytosis. If you biopsy the bone marrow, we see less than 10%, not more. No hyperviscosity syndrome and no macroglobulinemia. Amia means blood. Globulin is a plasma protein known as globulin because remember plasma proteins are either albumin or globulins and macro means big. Let's compare between multiple myeloma and MGUS. Is it cancer? Multiple myeloma? Of course it's cancer. MGUS? Nope. What's the cause of multiple myeloma? No one knows. Same for MGUS. How many plasma cells in the bone marrow? In multiple myeloma, these abnormal cells are more than 10%, but in MGUS, less than 10%. How about monoclonal or M protein in the blood? In multiple myeloma, more than 3 grams per deciliter, but in MGUS, less than 3. Hypercalcemia is more likely in multiple myeloma, less likely in MGUS. And organ damage, more likely in multiple myeloma, unlikely in MGUS. Renal failure, more likely in multiple myeloma, unlikely in MGUS. However, renal problems are unlikely in MGUS, but they are likely in MGRS, monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance. Anemia, more likely in multiple myeloma, less likely in MGUS. Bone problems and bone lesions, likely in multiple myeloma, unlikely in MGUS. Amyloidosis, likely in multiple myeloma, unlikely in MGUS. However, in MGRS, we can have amyloidosis, especially in the kidney. Hyperviscosity syndrome, more likely in multiple myeloma, less likely in MGUS. Macroglobulinemia, more likely in multiple myeloma, less likely in MGUS. We're done with MGUS, let's talk about MGRS, monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance. MGRS has three names. You can call it monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance. You can call it monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease in a patient with MGUS. So it's MGUS plus kidney disease. Where do you think these abnormal proteins are being deposited? In Swiss banks? No, they are being deposited in my kidney. Ouch, glomerulopathies with MGUS. So it's MGUS plus kidney disease. Here is a big mistake that some doctors make. They say, my patient just has MGUS and therefore we just watch and wait. Be careful because this could be MGRS. And in such case, you should not watch and wait. And instead, you should start treatment to protect the kidney from progressive kidney disease, which can end up as end-stage renal disease. To understand what happens to the kidney in MGRS, let's talk about anatomy of the kidney. You have two kidneys and then two ureters that lead to one urinary bladder and then one urethra to get the urine out of your body. To understand the kidney, please get two colors, a red color and a yellow color and draw with me. This was a branch of the renal artery. Okay, that's an artery, that's a vessel that's going to enter into the kidney. Okay, and it enters into the kidney as kidney glomeruli like this. The branch that enters into the kidney is called the afferent arteriole. And then after the glomerulus, you have the efferent arteriole, just like that. That's the red part. That's the blood. Then what? I have the yellow part known as the nephron. The nephron has many parts. The first part is called the Bowman's capsule. Then we have the proximal convoluted tubule, followed by the loop of Henle. Then we have the distal convoluted tubule, and you end up with the collecting ducts. All of this is going to end up in the ureter which will give the urine to the urinary bladder, then to the urethra. What is the fate of the efferent arterial if you follow it like this? Where is it going? It is going to become peritubular capillaries, just like that. So does the kidney have vessels? The answer is yes. Does the kidney have nephrons? The answer is yes. Does the kidney have tubules? The answer is also yes. And what's the name of this tuft? This tuft is called the glomerulus. And therefore, we can divide kidney disease into glomerular diseases, the red color, and tubular diseases, the yellow color. Here's the afferent arterial, then you have the glomerular capillary tuft, efferent arterial. As for the yellow part, it's called the nephron, which is made of many parts. The Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and then collecting tubules, collecting ducts, etc. until you end up in the ureter. What is a good kidney? A good kidney is a robust colander that's going to filter your blood. The good stuff should be returned back to you, but the bad stuff should end up in the urine. Now, what if the kidney lets proteins into the urine? That's not normal. Normally, urine should not have any proteins. 
But if my kidney is losing my good proteins in the urine, we call this protein urea, and we call the disease nephrotic syndrome. So nephrotic syndrome is when I'm losing proteins. But what if the kidney is losing blood in the urine? That's also not normal, because normally the kidney should have no blood in the urine. If I do have blood in the urine, it's called nephritic syndrome. Because the word itis means inflammation, the kidney is inflamed and shedding tears of blood into the urine. What is this? Afferent arterial, glomerular capillary tuft, and then efferent arterial. That's the red part. As for the yellow part, the nephron, there you go. Bowman's capsule is here, and then the proximal convoluted tubule. So we have zoomed in. Notice that this glomerular capillary is lined by endothelium. So we have cells here. In some diseases, these cells can proliferate and become hypercellular. And this proliferation will be termed proliferative kidney disease. You see this? These are the cells that line the glomerulus, called the endothelium, followed by glomerular basement membrane, followed by the podocyte. Any kidney disease that makes this glomerular basement membrane thicker is going to be termed membranous kidney disease. What if I have inflammation of the glomeruli? It's called glomerulitis. What if I have inflammation of the nephrons? It's called nephritis. So inflammation of the red parts, glomerulitis. Inflammation of the yellow parts, nephritis. How about both of them? Glomerulonephritis. So what is MGRS? A group of diseases that affect the blood and the kidney. Hematorenal conditions. Is MGRS cancer? Not yet. Did not fulfill all the criteria for cancer. So we can describe it as pre-malignant. Is the problem in the B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes? B lymphocytes. And then the B lymphocytes become plasma cells. If the plasma cells are abnormal, they will dish out abnormal aminoglobulins. And they are of one type only because cancer in general is monoclonal. One crazy cell copied itself gazillion times. So we call it the M protein from monoclonal. And these abnormal proteins are very toxic to my kidney, nephrotoxic. Some patients have monoclonal proteins that are only heavy chain, tons of heavy chains, but everything else is okay. Other patients have tons of light chain, other things are okay. However, a third group of people have intact immunoglobulin as a whole containing heavy chain and light chain together. So I have the whole immunoglobulin there. It's just too numerous and abnormal in function. Are these proteins normal or defective? Defective, dysfunctional, dysproteins in my emia, which means blood. About a tenth of MGUS patients have MGRS as well, so please protect their kidney. Do not just watch and wait. Do something to protect the kidney if the patient has MGRS. Most but not all patients with MGRS are older than 35. Please do not simply brush MGRS away as benign because its effect on the kidney are definitely not benign. Yes, it does not fulfill the criteria of cancer, but be careful because it can destroy the kidney. Just like a tumor in the brain, even if it's not a cancerous tumor in the brain, can still cause lots of damage because of the location. What are the clinical findings of MGRS, kidney disease symptoms? If I'm losing proteins in the urine, it's called proteinuria. If I'm losing blood in the urine, it's called hematuria. Some patients with MGRS have glomerular diseases, others have tubular diseases, and of course, when the tubules cannot handle the truth, I mean cannot handle the electrolytes, I can get abnormal levels of sodium, potassium, chloride, phosphate in the blood, etc., etc. In nephrotic syndrome, I'm losing proteins in the urine. So proteins in the urine are high, but proteins in the blood will be low because they are getting lost in the urine. Without these proteins, such as albumin, I get edema. Without the globulin proteins, what do I get? I can get increased infection and I can get increased risk of thrombosis. As for nephritic syndrome, the kidney is inflamed, shedding tears of blood. The kidney is making less urine. The kidney is unable to excrete the waste in the urine. So all of that waste piles up in the blood, such as blood, urea, nitrogen, and creatinine. A bad kidney can cause hypertension and vice versa. Hypertension can ruin a good kidney. How can we diagnose a patient with MGRS? 
First, you should suspect MGRS in any patient with a history of MGOS, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, smoldering multiple myeloma, and monoclonal B-cell lymphocytosis. What are these called collectively? Monoclonal gammopathies. What else can we do? Serum protein electrophoresis, urine protein electrophoresis, serum immunofixation, urine immunofixation. You can find the light chains in the serum. We can do immunofluorescence. We can stain for the light chains such as kappa or lambda to differentiate between the two types. Another important question to ask is what percentage of the proteins in the urine are actually albumin? And to find out this, you create a ratio. Urine albumin over urine creatinine in the numerator divided by urine total protein over urine creatinine in the denominator. Milligrams per grams, milligrams per grams, cancel this with, with this and you get a ratio. You can multiply by 100 to get it as a percentage. Less than 20% fits the picture of multiple myeloma. Because in multiple myeloma, the horrible disease, most of the proteins that I'm losing are the bigger ones, the globulins and I'm losing less of the tiny ones, the albumins. But in MGRS, which is relatively more benign if you compare it to multiple myeloma, I'm losing more of the tiny proteins, albumin, and I'm losing less of the big proteins, globulin. But that's not the case in every single type of MGRS. This greater than 20% number is especially true if the MGRS of, is of the glomerular type. We need to biopsy the kidney, that's for sure. Light microscopy, examination, electron microscopy, and immunofluorescence to look for the antigens and antibodies. Bone marrow biopsy, just like multiple myeloma, and CT scan with PET scan in some cases. Just because the patient has some antibodies in the urine doesn't necessarily mean that these antibodies are the ones responsible for the kidney damage. How do I know? You need to biopsy the kidney and then look at the antibodies in the urine and look at the antibodies in the kidney biopsy. Do they match? Are they of the same type? If the answer is yes, now you know the culprit. So let's biopsy the kidney. When we biopsy the kidney in patients with MGRS, sometimes we get organized lesions, sometimes we get non-organized lesions. Organized lesions have a pattern, they have an architecture, they have a substructure, but non-organized are more haphazard and random. Some patients with MGRS have a disease in the glomeruli, the red parts. Others have problems in the tubules, the yellow parts. Others are miscellaneous, such as the renal vessels, renal peritubular capillaries, or atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, which I have discussed in a separate video. Let's talk about the glomerular subtypes. Fibrillary glomerulopathy, amyloidosis, this is abnormal protein-like material or proteinaceous material that just likes to go all over your body and deposit in many tissues. This is a monoclonal gammopathy, so the patient might have this of the light chain type or the heavy chain type or both. So we have amyloidosis with light chain, amyloidosis of heavy chain, and amyloidosis with light and heavy chain. Then cryoglobulinemic glomerulonephritis, Emia means blood, globulin is globulin versus albumin, globulin is a plasma protein, like albumin. Cryo means cold, so these antibodies react at cold temperature. Monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease, where is it getting deposited? In the poor kidney. Membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis with monoclonal immunoglobulin, I have a separate video on this topic in my nephrology playlist. Membranous nephropathy, C3 glomerulopathy. What is C3? Complement protein number three. What is C4? Complement protein number four, causing dense deposit disease or triple D in the poor kidney. There is also proliferative glomerulonephritis with monoclonal aminoglobulin, which gets deposited in the kidney. Then tubular diseases. Some of them have light chain Fanconi syndrome. Fanconi means I've destroyed the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? I can also destroy the proximal tubule without crystals. Or I can have crystals, called crystal storing histiocytosis. Remember the classification into organized lesions versus not organized? Yep, organized like what? Sometimes they are organized like crystals, as in these diseases. Sometimes the lesions are organized like fibrils. What does that mean? Tiny fibers like this. Oh, thin fibers, yeah, such as fibrillary right, glomerulopathy, or amyloidosis. 
accumulation of this amyloid material that's getting deposited in the kidney. Or they could be made of microtubules, microscopic tubules, such as the cryoglobulinemic subtype and something else called aminotactoid glomerulonephritis. How about the non-organized? They are more granular, like a granule, which is going to look like this, and have hazard without a certain pattern, such as proliferative glomerulonephritis with amine globulin deposition, C3 glomerulopathy, and monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease. Quick note on proliferative glomerulonephritis with monoclonal aminoglobulin deposition, or PGNMID. First, what does the word proliferative mean? I have more cells in the glomeruli. These cells right here are more. So they get in the way of one another, making it harder for the kidney to function. Glomerulitis means inflammation of the glomeruli. Nephritis is inflammation of the nephron. But most of this disease is more glomerular than tubular. Itis, inflammation. With what? Monoclonal of one crazy type, aminoglobulin, this is globulin, not albumin, that functions for your immune system, because this means but just antibody, just like that, with heavy chain and light chain, etc. And they are being deposited in the kidney. So this abnormal antibody is attacking my own kidney. Normally, the antibody should attack foreign invaders, but now it's attacking my own body. That's why it's a pathology. And if that was not enough, a complement protein, why do you call it complement? Because it complements the action of the antibody. A weapon that can destroy your enemy, the foreign invader, can actually destroy you, your kidney. So this is a complement. I'm going to complement the antibody in its action. If the antibody is doing a good thing, like killing bacterial invaders, I'm going to help it. And if it's doing a bad thing, I'm going to help it as well. These are a group of proteins known as complement proteins or complement system. So this is what happens. Monoclonal antibodies will get trapped into my glomeruli because they are big, because they are globulins, and globulins are big. And when they get trapped, guess who's going to come and help them? Complement proteins. Now, not only are these abnormal monoclonal antibodies attacking my kidney and getting deposited into my kidney, the complement is doing the same thing as well. If you want to learn more about the complement system, I have a separate video on this topic, which you can find in my immunology playlist. In a nutshell, the complement system pulls the trigger. It can pull the trigger on the foreign invader, or it can pull the trigger on your own kidney. The complement binds the antibody at this area, but the antigen, in this case it's your kidney cells, bind the antibody at this area. How do I know that my kidney function is deteriorating? Well, GFR will be decreasing. Blood urea nitrogen will be rising in your blood. Creatinine will be increasing in your blood. Uric acid, another toxin, is increasing in your blood because the kidney is unable to excrete it. Tell me about the GFR decreasing. When the GFR decreases, it keeps going down and down and down and down. And based on how low the number is, we classify kidney disease or kidney failure into stage 1, almost normal, stage 2, mild disease, stage 3, moderate kidney disease, stage 4, severe chronic kidney disease, stage 5 is end-stage kidney disease. Is treatment important for MGRS? Absolutely, way more when compared to MGUS. Treatment is important. Why? To decrease the size of the lesion? No. To protect the kidney. That's what we want. We're not trying to control the tumor bulk. We're trying to protect the kidney. That's the number one goal. Unfortunately, if something has already been deposited in my kidney, there is no going back. Currently, we have no effective way of removing the kidney deposits once they have been actually deposited into the kidney tissue. Chemotherapy agents depends on the result of the biopsy. Depending on my pathological type, the pathological clone, the type of the antibody, we can target these pathologies by specific chemotherapeutic agents. How do doctors choose one chemotherapeutic agent rather than the other? It's trial and error, it's patient's preference, availability, price, side effect profile, and more. Besides chemotherapy, autologous stem cell hematopoietic transplant is an option, especially for MIDD or amyloidosis. Some doctors suggested using immunomodulatory drugs that we use to treat lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, 
proteasome inhibitors or cytotoxic agents that we use to treat cancers. Can we manage amyloidosis? We try. Try to treat the underlying cause. If it was multiple myeloma, you treat it. And other options might help, such as TNF inhibitors, the hematopoietic stem cell transplant, and if there is kidney failure, we do dialysis. If I'm losing my globulins, including the immunoglobulins in my urine, I can become more vulnerable to infections. You can learn more about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications by downloading my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. Kidney failure can lead to metabolic acidosis. Learn about metabolic acidosis versus alkalosis, respiratory acidosis versus alkalosis by downloading my acid base imbalance course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about how your kidney is supposed to function normally, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Don't forget to show some love to Michael in the comment section. Thank you for supporting my channel. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, and physics make perfect sense.